Well, morning guys, and welcome to the third Sunday Q&A. Which should have been the fourth Sunday Q&A, but like, I've been running. I, had, I don't think I've had a day off in... Let's get on for three weeks now. But that sounds an awful lot worse than it is. You can be melodramatic about this stuff. <laughs> Last Saturday, I had a, you know, your, your man with a van suddenly, aren't you? Man with a van. Oh, we know, mate. He's got an empty van. He'll help you out. Well, I've got good friends of mine. I've got a shop they had to be out of, and I didn't mind. They're good friends, so I had to help them clear the shop. And then before that, I had a job come up, taking from Luton, not far from me, to Oxford, which, in fairness, was going in the direction of the shop. And then I got a phone. Then I was awake really early in the morning for some reason. So... I went on exchange and bizarrely, this is interesting, there was a job on there coming from um, Heathrow to Luton. I thought, well, I can go from me to Heathrow, Heathrow to Luton, drop that job off, then Luton to Luton, pick the next job up, Luton to Oxford, drop that job off and then do the shop. So I went, yeah, I'll do it. That's fine. Um, so I got 140 quid, 70 pound for the first job, 70 pound for the second job. I was done by up past 10, 11 o'clock and then when I did the shop. Um, as a result of doing this job, this is something that, you know, people have said, trying to get the money together. It's very tough to make money on the CX. Well, yeah, it is. But it is very useful in other ways. And I keep saying it's not a magic wand, but it's good as an introduction, and it's very good for backloads and ways back. Andrew Broadbent gets that. Um, so this morning, I thought I was having a day off. I thought I'd do it up to me paperwork and that stuff. The phone, the phone goes off. And I thought it was the alarm. I thought, I've set that on seven days and I forgot to turn it off. It was the guys I did the job for last Sunday. Well, you know that job we did last Sunday, last Saturday? It's up again. Do you want it? And I went, yeah, I'll take it. Because it wasn't, it was this good job. It's okay. But if you think about it, it's a Sunday. You're not going to get back miles. Uh, it was from Luton to Heathrow, which is not far from me. But by the time I get to Heathrow, I'm coming back empty. So you get in, you're running the van for one job. You're coming back empty. The job was 70 quid. You've probably got 20 quid's worth of diesel on there. So you've given up your Sunday morning, you've given up your line, you've given up a day in bed, you've given up the family for 50 quid. But then you're on their radar. This is something my wife said. She says, when she used to work in a temporary agency, if you said no, you go to the bottom of the list. But you say yes, and you do a good job, and you say yes a few times, suddenly you find that phone rings more and more and more. And then before you know it, you've got you, hello, Barry, hello, Pete. Mate, I've got a job for you. This is the stage you want to get to. This is like stage one where you get people ringing you up and they're going, I've got a job, I've got a job. And in fairness, if they're ringing you, they're already offering you better money than you're going to get on the CX because there's no bidding. The guy said to me, he said, how much do you want for it? Originally this morning, I went, 80 quid? He went, hmm. So will you do 65? I said, give me 70. So I've got 70. If I have to do it next Sunday, I'll go, look, I'll do it, but you've got to bear in mind I'll come back empty. You can talk to them. You can reason with these people. They're fine. Anyway, that's... Of the thing, right? I've got my little notes. Right, so questions. Um, before we go on to questions, firstly, a big up to is it? I think it's Danny Richardson. I think it's Keith Barnes. I wrote this. I scribbled this down when I was outside, um, outside one of the airplane, airport places this morning. But putting me to shame, these guys are running all over the shop. They're going. It's like here to Perth, and then Perth to Cardiff, and then Cardiff to Portsmouth, and then Portsmouth to Penzance. And well played, guys. So you guys, you actually putting me to shame. Well done. Keep on trucking. You know, you keep on trucking the free world. Keep it all going. So right, but questions. Uh, right, me old mate Andrew Broadbent. A couple of questions. Um, have I ever had to do a CRB check to go on the career exchange? Uh, no. Is long short of it. Well, there was a while ago when I decided I was going to be a London cab driver. And to do that, they want CRB check. They want all kinds of stuff. To be on the exchange, as of yet, no. All the exchange want for you to get on the exchange, they want, uh, they want proof of the insurance. Um, they want proof of goods in transit insurance. And you need to pass the test, which is the, the thing that you do on the computer. But it's not really that difficult to get on the exchange because... Well, you're not dealing with children, you're not dealing with vulnerable people, you're moving boxes from A to B and it's going to become very clear very quickly if you're not up to the task, in which case people just won't employ you. So there's no, there's no criminal records check, there's no anything like that that's involved. So if, you're, if, if you were thinking, well, you know, I need to crack on with something in my life and you're a bit worried about a maybe slightly, slightly jaded past or something like that, don't worry about it. They don't care. They care that, that you're as good as your next job. You do that job, you do it well. You do the next job, you do another job, you do it well. You build up a reputation, that's fine. Start doing bad jobs, you build up a bad reputation. It's you're as, you're as good as you are. 
that's all they require. So I guess in some respects that's a good thing. The other question Andrew asked me is, have I ever slept in my van? You mean the Mercedes Travel Lodge? Yes, the Mercedes Travel Lodge. I sometimes sleep better in the Mercedes Travel Lodge than I do in my own bed. But yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, of course. I know people, I was speaking to a guy, I got to a job a couple of weeks ago, and he basically goes out on a Monday morning and comes home on a Friday night. And basically he'll do the jobs and wherever he finishes, he's got like a sleeper thing built above the, he's got a sleeper thing in his van. No, he sleeps in the cab. But he was going to get a sleeper thing built above the um, in the loot and above the cab. He said it was like it was crazy money, thousands to get this thing put in. And that's what he would do. He would get up in the morning and he'll run and run and run. And when it finishes, he'll go to Kip and he'll wake up in the morning. It's a good way to make a lot of money because you eliminate all the dead miles. Because when you wake up in the morning, when the jobs start to ping up, you know, say I ended up in Glasgow, I ended up in Manchester. I didn't have to go all the way home. And in the morning, a job come up in Manchester took me home. Um, from a, from a, you know, and if you want to take that further, then take it to Europe. You know, sort of if you're prepared to kip and you're going to, you know, take it to the European exchange, which is something I've got to get onto. But yeah, sleeping in the cab. The one thing I've never really worked out is why you'd have this little thing built above the sleep in the cab, or you know, sleeping your, you know, above the cab in the loot and or, or sleep in the cab, when you've actually got a large square area in the back of your van, four foot by two foot. You could put inflatable mattresses in. You could put in a camp bed. You could put in a little Z bed. You could put in just something that you could just roll out on the floor. From my point of view. What I tend to do is I just basically, I've got a cushion and I've got coats which I use when I'm cold and I just stick my head down, put the coats over me and you fall asleep and you just sleep and if you wake up and you're a bit, it's not always the most comfortable, you sort of have to wriggle around a bit, but hey, if I suppose if you did it every night you might want something a little bit, a little bit more solid for the nights that I'm out and also, I mean I've had nights when I've gone out, don't forget you've got family and friends all over there. Um, I did one job when I went up to Newcastle I had to pick up kidney machines early in the morning. I got a friend up in Newcastle, so I went up on the Sunday. And we went out and had a catch-up, had a few beers and a curry. That was nice. Um, I, I had to do one job where I had to pick up very in the morning in um, Torquay, sort of Cornwall area. I got an auntie down in, in Torquay. So I went, again, I went down on a Sunday. We had a bit of Sunday dinner together. It was very nice. And I woke up in the morning... I was an hour away from the job rather than five hours away from the job. Which, bear in mind, when I picked that job up, I then had to go to Cardiff and I had to go all the way back. I was very grateful when I woke up in the morning after um, a good night's sleep, like, you know. So, sleeping in the cab, not to be so for it. The Mercedes Travel Lodge, very comfortable. Um, the Red Sea, I've got to make an apology. The ultra low emission zone, I said it came in on the 1st, it doesn't, it comes in the 8th, which means by the time you've seen this video, it's in, because it comes in tomorrow morning. So like I say, once you cross into the Red Sea, it's now £23 to go into the congestion zone, unless you're driving a spanking brand new van, uh, charge accordingly, even if you're driving a spanking brand new van, because bear in mind that everybody who isn't driving the lovely van that you've got is suddenly going to be quoting an extra £12.50 on that job, or they're going to go skimp very quickly. So... Red Sea's in. Um, other ads. Sorry, a guy asked me about this. He said, do you ever take jobs just off the exchange? Or what about other places? He said, I've noticed man and van. You take the jobs from anywhere you can. I mean, I don't know if you've, those of you who have been running on the exchange will notice that there's not an awful lot that happens on a Saturday and Sunday. But if you want to work seven days a week, you can. Because Saturdays particularly, small removals. Man and van, 250 quid. Two man and van, 330 quid. You can get a porter in, pay him 80 pound for the day. The two of you, you can do a small removal, you know, a two bedroom house. Presumably if you're running, you should have blankets and straps, or if you haven't, you can get them for 20, 30 quid off Amazon. Just do house removals, that kind of stuff. Or moving boxes. My daughter rang me one Sunday, I'm sitting here, and she's, um, she works with Laura Ashley, and she said, there's a guy who wants a sofa moved. Will you do it, Dad? I went, yeah, of course I will. So it's 60 quid. I drive up from here to Laura Ashley, which was 10 miles, that were, um, 20 miles up the road. Drive from there to his house, 10 miles. The whole job took me an hour and a half and you paid me 60 pound. Take, the, take, take it from everywhere you can. And you never know where it's going to come from. You might get a guy that says, Can you, I need a small m removal. And then you turn around and you say, well, I'm a, I'm a transport firm. And he says, oh, I work for a transport firm. We need people like you. Get yourself out there. The more you get yourself out there, the more you do it. Like I say, in the beginning, it might not be so easy. You're going to make a few mistakes. You might not get the reward you want. But slowly but surely, you'll get more. If you do the job well, you'll get more and more work. And the work will filter down. And then you'll get to choose. 
and then you, you'll get contacts and you'll get people ringing you up. It, I mean, I've only been doing about six months now. I'm into the process. Um, a guy turned around to me. He said, I dropped it. It was a, a supplier I'd drop off to. He says, how long have you been doing it? I went, six months. He said, yeah. He said, um, give it a year. Within a year, you're laughing. He said, we started off with five hire vans from Northolt. We now own 60 vans. He was a guy that I put into. Nice guy. Nice guy in Coventry. He was a lovely fella. But um, like I say, I don't know where it's going to lead to. I just know I'm better off than I was on the markets. And six months in, I'm in a much better position than I was before. People are ringing me. I'm getting more regular jobs. I'm getting better paid jobs. It's not a magic wand. It doesn't start from the beginning. But you keep at it. Do the job well. Be polite. Turn up. It should work for you. What else have we got on here? Um, oh, yeah. I think it's a Jonathan Simpson. I might have written it down. I'll describe this quickly. Does the exchange generate invoices for you? I've got to say, it's, it's awesome. It's really good from that point of view. Not only does it sort of generate the invoices so you can send the invoices out, it also keeps a track of what time they pay at, whether it's 30 days, 45 days, 60 days. Alerts you when they're when they're due. You can keep an account. You can keep like a book. And I was speaking to the guy from the exchange because they've just redone the whole ledger thing, and they said it's just turning into more of an accountancy software as well. Because I said to him, I said I'm going to have to get on this QuickBooks, which is the thing I want to do next. Because apparently they do they does interface with QuickBooks and interface with Sage. I don't know about that yet. I'll let you know when I know. And he said you, you probably won't even need it. You've got this, but because I run a factoring company, because I don't wait for the invoices, they pay me every seven days, they do that side of things. It's all a bit of a maelstrom for me, I've got to say. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of the hurricane, but um, I am getting there. But from the point of view of generating invoices, keeping track of invoices, it's actually very, very good for that. And the more information you give it, the better it gets. So... Maybe one day I will end up dumping the um, accountancy software and just using the exchange software. I don't know. <laughs> like I say, watch this space, I'll keep you informed. But from the point of view of um, generating invoices and all that kind of stuff, yes, it does. What else we got here? Van weights, right. I will do one on vans. I promise you, I will do one on vans. But and we're trying to get to the bottom of this because the guy turned around and he said to me, he said, the maximum you can carry in a loot and it is like a tonne. But I don't think I don't think that's right. And he come back to me and said, I don't think that's right. The long and the short of it is, you're looking at laden weight. So when it says your van is three, say for example, you've got a Luton van or a long wheelbase or an extra long wheelbase, it will say laden weight. Don't ignore the plate because the plate might tell you what the van can carry before you've even put the box on it. Um, laden weight, 3,500 kilos, three and a half ton, right? Now, on average, a Luton weighs... Two and a half ton, so you can carry a ton. But that's including the. T I think maybe that's inclu that's including the tail lift. So if you've got a curtain sided without a tail lift, you can already carry one and a half ton, one and a quarter ton, because that tail lift weighs quarter and a half, quarter ton, a quarter and a half to half a ton. If you've got a curtain, you've just taken out two great big bits of wood which are raving heavy and replaced them with a bit of fabric which isn't. So the way you do it is this: get your van, fill it full of petrol because that weighs. Put your spare tyres on, put everything you have, then empty it, sweep the floor, and take it down to a waybridge. You can take it down to like local waybridges, you can take it down to Vosa, say, I want my van weighed. And they will weigh the van, and they will say, your van weighs this. So say, for example, you weigh your van in, and your van weighs 2,600 kilos. Take that off the three and a half tonne, you can carry 900 kilos. If you want to carry more, look at ways of making your van lighter. That guy, the one who said he was going to get his sleep a bit made up, he said, I have spent, he spent money, five grand, six grand, specially making his van. He said, it's all aluminium, it's all body. He says, but as a result of which, I have now got a van that can carry a ton and a half. Transits have got a double wheelbase on them. Mercedes have only got a single wheelbase. I think, I'm not quite sure about double single, whether you can carry more or double, I don't think so. But you've got to bear in mind, you've got two extra wheels and a bigger axle. That weighs more. So all you do, as I understand it, and don't get me wrong like I keep saying, I'm not the oracle, I'm not the poster boy. If I'm wrong, stick on the notes and say, Peter, you're wrong, I'll look into it, and I'll put my hands up next week and go, you're right, I was wrong. But as I understand it, it's laden weight. So what, what they will do is if they pull you, they will take you to a waybridge. Vosa will take you to a waybridge, and they'll put you on the waybridge, and they'll go, right, your van is supposed to weigh three and a half tonnes. Your van currently weighs four tonnes, you're half a tonne overweight, you're fined. Or your van is supposed to weigh three and a half tonnes, your van weighs less than three and a half tonnes, 
off you go, son. Because they don't know whether the pallet on board weighs more than the tail lift. They don't know whether that's a light tail lift. All they care about is that you're on the weight. That's as I understand it. If you work for Vosa, or if you know about the police, or you've got an uncle or a brother or something like that, you want to put me straight. But I'm 90% sure that's the truth. So get your van, get it empty, fill it full of petrol. If you've always run with two people for some reason, put a body in the front and go and get it weighed. And then you'll know what you're legally allowed to carry. And then if you're over, you're over. Down to you, son. Um, well, this is Michael Hall asked me a question. No opportunity. I've written this down when I was thinking, uh, no. Don't even to drive. Uh, yeah, I don't even. I was just saying, I see. Michael, I'm sorry. I wrote that so quickly, I don't even know what it is. I'll have to come back to you. Retext me. I'll ask it. Right, so quickly. So you might be thinking, but I asked him a question. Why are you talking to me? What's wrong with me? Well, gentlemen, that's because your questions are too good. Your questions on their own deserve a video. So Danny Thomas, shall I get a fuel card? We'll get onto that one. You get your own video, son. And that will also be, not only that, how to get a tank of petrol for a quid. Watch this space. Um, Ricky Armour, locations and times. Uh, top three. I'll get on to you, my friend. We'll see what we can do with that one. Steve Veg asked me about co-loading. We'll get you a video done on that one, my friend. Uh, John Buffalo asked me about van sizes. I will do one on pros and cons of van sizes. Um, and Arish Malif, I've I'm, I'm got that. I'm, I'm, I've scribbled this really quickly. I do apologise. They came out with fork truckers. I was trying to get it down. Um, what happens when the jobs come on CX and they're sold before they turn up? Right, it's an interesting little trick, this one. You want to get the jobs before anybody else? Um, there's a way of doing it. Uh, my mate Tony taught me this, but you're going to have to watch your space because I haven't got time, it's Sunday. And I can't do this one in one video, and, you know, time is precious. So, uh, oh, and air freight, that's one other thing. Guys, be careful. If you ever go, I'll do one on airports. But in the meantime, carry your ID with you. If you've got a passport... You've got a driver's license, stick it in the glove compartment. You've got a passport, stick that in the glove compartment too. I know these are the two most precious documents that you've got and they're sitting in the van if something happens to them, you're screwed. But you get into places and they, some of them want two forms of ID. The most ridiculous ones are airports, some of which want um, company ID. And I said, what's company ID? They said, well, it's something with your picture and your name and address of your company on. I said, well, firstly, I'm not working for my company. I'm representing someone else's company because I'm here as um, National Same Day, but I'm actually Vango Transport. And secondly, how do I get that? The guy says, you put it off on the internet. I went, well, anyone can do that. He says, yeah, I know. What's the point of that? But if you've got a passport and you've got driving license, you've or two proper for like some proper form of ID. At the end of the day, you've got to give me a break, mate. You know, I'll do the best I can here. So, anyway, that's nearly it. I just want to say special thank you to C11 Yan, or whatever your name is. Again, I'll scribble this on bits of paper. Um, who is very knowledgeable and has obviously been doing this a lot longer than me, and he's putting me straight on a few things like van ages and sizes and how many miles you run in a day. It's all a big learning curve, my friend. So, a big thank you to you. Thanks for subscribing, guys. Thanks for listening all the way through. This is today's Sunday's q and I don't think we'll be able to bang them off. And like I say, I'll do those videos as and when I can. But um, in the meantime, today's report from Peter Courier Driver, the man sitting in his front room. Take care. Take money.